We say that a sequence is called geometric if successive terms have a common ratio. So this right here is actually a recursive definition of what we refer to as a geometric sequence. Um, and so let's, let's kind of unwrap what that recursive definition means. We say that a sequence is geometric. Well, you're going to have some initial term, right? A recursive sequences start with something. So we're going to call the first term of the sequence, which of the sequence is going to be a sub n here. We'll just call the first term a. a is just some initial value. It's the seed of a recursive sequence. But if we want successive terms to have a constant ratio, what that means is this idea right here. If we take a n over a n minus 1, so those would be... Uh, those would be successive terms in the sequence, right? You have you have the term a n minus one and its successor a n. If we take the ratio, we should get a constant value, which we're going to call r for this, the constant ratio in this situation. So successive terms have a constant ratio if their if their quotient is equal to some constant number r. Now, if you take this equation and clear the denominators, well, then you'll end up with a n equals r times a n minus 1. So if you know a term in, a, in the sequence, the next term in the sequence, a sub n, will just equal the previous term times it by this constant ratio r. And this is what we mean by a geometric sequence. So some examples of that, take the sequence 2, 6, 18, 54, 162. And what you're going to see here is your first term, a is 2. That's just the first term in the list. That should be easy to identify here. But if you look at consecutive terms here, take 6 divided by 2, that's equal to 3. So that's going to be our candidate for our constant ratio r. And if we look at other look at other ratios, right? 6 or 18 divided by 6, that's likewise 3. Um, if we take 54 divided by 18, that's also 3. Uh, if we take 54 times 162, that likewise is going to equal 3. And so all all consecutive terms in this sequence, if we divide them, will always give us three. This is evidence that our sequence is in fact geometric right here. And in fact, using this information, knowing that the common ratio is three, we can actually find the next term of the sequence. The next term of the sequence will be 162 times three, which is equal to uh, 486. The next term in the sequence will be 486 times three, which is 1,458. The next term in the sequence will be that number times 3, which is 4,374. And you can see we could keep on going, 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 going. We could always find the next term of the sequence just by multiplying by 3, times by 3, times by 3, times by 3. Uh, take another example. Let's consider the, the, the sequence s sub n equals 2 to the negative to the 2 to the negative n power here. So this sequence we mean would be this sequence right here. S1 equals 1 half, S2 equals 1 fourth, S3 equals 1 eighth, S4 equals 1 sixteenth, S5 is 1 over 32, S6 is equal to 1 over 64. So we're just taking powers of 1 half. That's our sequence right here. Um, I claim that this sequence is in fact geometric. And to show that it's geometric, we have to show that consecutive terms, their ratio is constant. So it doesn't matter what n is, you should always get a constant right here. So if you take Sn over Sn minus 1, well Sn is 2 to the negative n right here. Sn minus 1 would be 2 to the negative n minus 1 power. Now because we have negative exponents, we can actually take reciprocals right here. And this will look like 2 to the n minus 1 on top, 2 to the n on the bottom. And then by exponent rules, because we have 2n minus 1 on top, 2n on the bottom, we can subtract the exponents like we do here. We'll get 2 to the n minus 1 minus n. In which case here, the n's cancel out. We're left with 2 to the negative 1 which is just one half. And you'll see that this number doesn't depend on n whatsoever. It doesn't depend where we are in the sequence. This number one half is independent of the number n. And so this is our constant ratio of one half. This shows that this sequence is a geometric sequence whose constant ratio is one half. Another example here, um, let's show that the sequence t sub n given by powers of four is likewise geometric. You're gonna see a very similar calculation here. If we look at the ratio of consecutive terms, you're going to take Tn on top, Tn minus 1 on the bottom. Um, so for Tn, you're just going to record the formula just straight from above, 4 to the n. For Tn minus 1, you're going to replace in the formula the n with an n minus 1, like we see right here. And that's your ratio. Simplifying that, you can subtract the powers. 
you get four to the n minus n minus one, and then the n's will cancel because you get n minus n. Then you're gonna get a, a negative negative one, so you end up with four to the first, that is four. And that's again our constant ratio. This sequence would look like four, 16, 64, 252, uh, sorry, 256. We're just looking at powers of four right here. And so these last two examples you'll notice, right? We had powers of one half, powers of four, um, and then in the first example, right, we were increasing by powers of three. It turns out that geometric sequences in some ways behave like exponentials. And we actually see this in general. So for a general geometric sequence right here, let's say the initial term is A and its constant ratio is R. So therefore the first term will just be A, it's the initial term. To find the second term, A2, we're gonna multiply the first term, A1, by R. But as A1 is just an A, A2 will just look like R times A. For A3, we have to times R, or A2 by R to get A3. But since A2 was just equal to R times A, we could insert that here. We get R times RA, which is R squared A. Uh, we do this for A4. A4 will be R times A3. A3 is R squared times A. Therefore, A to the fourth, sorry, A4 will be R cubed A. If we do this for the fifth one, right, A5 will be R times A4. A4 we saw was r cubed a, and so you get another r, you get r squared to the a. And so by mathematical induction, we can follow this pattern and see the following. Um, a to the n will just equal r times a to the n minus one, its predecessor, but by induction, a to the n minus one will be r n minus two power times a, and so you increase the power by one, you're gonna get r to the n minus one times a. In which case we then see in general that a geometric sequence is very much like an exponential expression. You're going to have some initial value a and then that's going to be multiplied by some power of r. But our power of r is going to be one less than our current position. So the nth spot will have the n minus one power of r. And that defines a general geometric sequence.